A distribution that has excess kurtosis is also called a heavy-tailed or fat-tailed distribution. I'd like to show you how we calculate kurtosis for a distribution and also consider whether it's better to talk about kurtosis as a feature of the distribution's peak or peakedness as opposed to the distribution's heavy-tailed or fat-tailedness. Before I show you the calculation of kurtosis here, I would just like to briefly show what we mean visually by the kurtosis of a distribution. And I'll use the standard normal, my usual culprit to do that. This is a PDF or probability density function for the standard normal. Now for any distribution, we typically only need the first four moments because that gets us a long way toward describing or characterizing almost any probability distribution. So the first moment, of course, is the mean or average. And for the standard normal, that's zero by definition. The second moment is a measure of dispersion, or we could say spread, and that is a variance. In the case of the standard normal, the variance or measure of dispersion is one. That also means its square root or standard deviation is also one. The third moment I covered in the previous video is skew or skewness, and I'll denote that with an S. And we said that that was a measure of the length of the tail. So positive skew can also be called right skew, for example. And that may would mean that the right tail is longer than the left tail. And also counterintuitively, perhaps, Positive skew is oftentimes associated with a left-leaning distribution. So that's the first, second, or third moments. Average, variance, skew. And then we have kurtosis. This is typically talked about in two ways. The first way is common, but I think not as good. And that's to refer to the peakedness of the distribution. Because kurtosis, we typically define kurtosis or understand kurtosis relative to this normal or in this case this standard normal and high kurtosis or heavy kurtosis or I should say excess kurtosis would be associated with a high peak or we could say high peakedness and this is generally the case excess kurtosis is generally associated with a higher peak than the normal, so we could say it has high peakedness. However, it's actually not always the case for every distribution. It's just generally the case. And so I think the second way to talk about this is better, and that's to say that excess kurtosis means the density in the tails is heavy. Or in other words, we have heavy tails, sometimes fat tails. And that just means we have higher density than the normal in comparison to the normal in one or both tails. We could have heavy tail right, could have heavy tail left, or we could have heavy tails on both sides. Because at the end of the day, what we kurtosis matters for us in risk because it means that there is a higher probability of an outcome in the tail or in the extreme tail. So for this reason, that's the better way to talk about excess kurtosis as a heavy tailed distribution. Now it is associated with higher peaks for the following reason. We're, we want to compare to the normal and we typically want to compare distributions with similar variances. So if you imagine taking this distribution and just adding some density in the tails to make them fatter, that by itself would increase the variance, would it not? But if our goal is to standardize the variance and keep the variance at unit, then in order to compensate for <clears throat> higher density in the tails, we'd actually have to cut some out, so to speak, here and bring this peak up. That would be you can see sort of visually the only way to add density on the tails but keep our variance at about unit would be to add a higher peak. And for this reason, heavy tails, high density in the tails, it does tend to be associated with a higher peak. So that's visually. Then mathematically, we'll see that the pattern is similar to the variance. And as before, I'm assuming a binomial distribution with n of four or four trials 
where the probability of success P is 30% for each. And so here is my probability mass function, my PMF, for that binomial distribution. Look, and looking at it, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be able to say visually this distribution is so uh, short or has so the, the n is so small that I think it's hard to identify whether or not this would be a heavy tailed distribution or not. But here we have the x's, the f of x, the probability for each outcome, then x times f of x, here is x times its probability, and the sum of those values, of course, is the weighted average of the possible values of x, and so that is the mean of this binomial, and this mean is at 1.2. So then I have the second and fourth moments. The second moment, of course, is going to lead to the variance, and here's our general form for the rth moment. So for the second moment, we're just using r equal to 2. And for each value here, we have the probability, in this case 24%, multiplied by the difference between x and the mean. That difference raised to the second power because we're doing the second moment, such that the sum of this column is 0 0.84 and it is our second moment or second central moment or second moment about the mean which in fact is the variance. So the variance of this binomial is 0 0.84 and we could also get that by multiplying p times 1 minus p times n but we did it the long way and of course the square root of that is the standard deviation of this binomial. So then the fourth moment which is going to lead to our kurtosis or measure of tail density is in the fourth column, final column. Same pattern, it's f of x multiplied by the difference between x and the mean but we're taking that difference and raising it to the fourth power. So here's the pattern but r equals 4 for the fourth central moment. Then the sum of those is the fourth moment. And the fourth moment then for this binomial is just shy of 1.9. However, as I think I mentioned before, the kurtosis needs to be standardized. And we standardize by dividing by um, sigma to the fourth power, just as skew was standardized by dividing by just as skew was the third central moment divided by sigma to the third power. And so uh, sigma to the fourth power is the standard deviation to the fourth power, which is also equal to the variance squared. So I get the kurtosis for this binomial distribution by taking that fourth moment, and I could divide by the variance squared, and I get 2.69 is my kurtosis. And we often, we compare this to the normal such that it's common to take the kurtosis and subtract three to get the excess kurtosis. So that the normal distribution, my standard normal here has by, de by definition a, an excess kurtosis of zero. And my binomial here has an excess kurtosis of negative 0.3 meaning just less than zero, meaning this would be a light-tailed or slightly light-tailed, or we could say slightly thin-tailed distribution as opposed to a heavy-tailed distribution. If we wanted to be geeky about it, um, this is also this, when excess kurtosis is less than zero or when we have the thin or light tails, we could also call that uh, plat platykurtosis, or which is a P L A T Y, or so it could say platykurtic or platykurtosis. And just for example, if I take this probability of 0.3 and shift it to 0.2, 20% of success, I happen to get an outcome here for the uh, heavy tailedness or kurtosis of this distribution of 3.063. So that's my kurtosis. Subtracting 3 in this case gives me a positive value. And we would we would say this distribution has slightly is slightly heavy tailed or slightly fat tailed. And then again if we wanted to use the geeky term, 
we could say that's leptokurtic or leptokurtosis, or the distribution exhibits leptokurtosis. And in risk, of course, we care about um, leptokurtosis because that means we have heavy tails and a higher probability of an extreme uh, outcome or extreme loss. So that's really the uh, calculation of kurtosis. That was under a uh, probability distribution for the binomial, and these are expected values. So we fully characterize the distribution, and so that is a population um, distribution. And just finally, if you want to pull down the spreadsheet, as I did before, I've run a simulation. So in this case, uh, as usual, I've hidden most of the rows in the simulation from 4 to 97. But here, I've just run a simulation of 100 random draws from this binomial distribution. So I have the random continuous uniform variable that is via inverse transform converted into a binomial random that's drawn from our distribution. So I have 100 random draws that are IID, independent and identically distributed, from the binomial population distribution that I specified. And then here, um, you can see each time I rerun that, I'm going to get a different sample outcome. But and so on, I run it a second time, then my sample mean this time is 1.08, not exactly equal to the population mean. And here in this column, I calculate the second central moment, and then here is the fourth central moment. So analogous here to what I did with the populations. So then I have the sum of those. And then the sum here of this column, if I divide that by 100, the n, what I have here is the fourth central moment, such that my kurtosis for this sample is that fourth central moment divided by you can see here the variance squared. And I get 1.562 when I run this simulation. And let's see, I'll run it another time. I've just compared it finally to the Excel function of kurtosis here run on the same sample outcome. There's my kurtosis function. The Excel kurtosis by definition is already an x is already the the xl kurtosis is already an excess kurtosis so we add 3 to get this back to comparing it to my kurtosis and excel's um kurtosis is higher so it's always going to be slightly higher and that's because excel does a small sample adjustment and treats this appropriately as a sample the small sample adjustment is non-trivial, so I didn't show that. But if you pull up the spreadsheet, it's in the spreadsheet there. And it can, we can reconcile here the kurtosis that I generated with Excel's true um, sample kurtosis that's adjusted for the sample size. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you.